Welcome back. Now let's talk about something that is affecting life and business in Lagos. Um, the lingering traffic into a papa in Lagos has continued to defy all solutions considering the various interventions by security and traffic management agencies and even top government officials. Although at intervals, motorists experience some relief in no time at all, the tankers and trucks are back on the roads, causing especially residents and workers in the Apapa area a lot of headache. The Nigerian army, with other security agencies, tried to intervene, but the situation quickly returned to the status quo. Even a call card system was introduced to check the indiscriminate movement of trucks in the area. The presidential task force on Apapa gridlock has said that it would begin impounding deviant and idle articulated vehicles on Lagos bridges and roads. <laughs> now, that uh, th does cause some laughter. Well, to help us look at this, this intractable problem, uh, we have uh, Brigadier General Shola Ayovon, retired who is the chairman of the APAPA Residents Association. Good morning, General. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. And we have uh, joining us from Abuja, um, an old friend of the house, Mr. Femi Boyede, an export expert. Good morning. I'm still a friend of the... <laughs> <laughs> Good have, Thank morning. I'm still a friend. Thank you for joining us. It's been a while. Now, let me begin with the general. General, can you give us an update? What is the situation as of today? Well, the genesis of uh, today's problem hinges on two factors. On um, the concessioning of the port and the proliferation of the tank farm. After the military rule, the arrival of the um, civil rule, the part was concession, concession that, that is uh, leased out to port uh, workers. Mm. And prior to that, all the trailers parked inside the port. So whoever needs need their services, engage their services. And when bringing in exports or goods going out of the country, it was, the port was big enough to take all of them. Mm. Mm. But the advent of uh, concessioning stopped that. Thereby, the trailers have to park outside the port. They, they are supposed to have their parking lot. And I, I believe one of the um, uh, laid down rules of uh, when the port was concession is that the shipping companies and the users of the port, the companies to which the port was concession, are supposed to have their parking lots and uh, bays where the trailers are supposed to deposit their containers. But Looks like the government hasn't got the will. Or the, the government has not compelled the shipping companies to comply. So the roads, the bridges, below become their parking lot. Mm. Even those manufacturing inside the port, they have the um, parking lot. The onus is on, is on the government to to ensure that this is implemented. Mm. Till now, it hasn't been done. Okay. Now, um, on and off, there's some relief. Uh, is there any relief today? Like you said, on and off. There's a task force which is working rigorously, involving the Navy, mm. the Army, the NSCDC, and uh, in cooperation with the, with the MPA security and some members of uh, NUPENG, 
So there's some relief today. There is some relief today, but tomorrow we don't know. You may not be able to get there. So yeah. I believe there is no. They have to make more concerted efforts mm. and come up with a plan mm. by which to make sure that it's stable. Okay. Now, Mr. Bo Mr. Boyode, you are an export expert. Ah, I like that. Um, Apapa seems to be the major working port in Nigeria today, as in that is where most of the goods coming into Nigeria come through and those going out of Nigeria go through. So between Apapa and Tinkan, which are both in the same sector, um, how do you think this is going to affect Christmas coming, for instance, importation and, well, mainly importation of goods towards the festivities and business in general for the importer-exporter? Yeah, Alero, what we're talking about here should go beyond Christmas. It should go beyond the residents. It should go beyond temporary relief. And it is not futuristic. It is happening already. It started happening as far back as about six, seven months ago that Nigeria is experiencing very drastic negative economic impact of the gridlock. Now, it's also a little bit um, smallish um, to look at it only from the point of view of traffic on the bridges and um, probably dead weight of trailers on the roads. The fact is we need to look at the time value of money or the money value of time in this case. As trailers spend as long as three weeks when they get into Lagos, before they can actually get into the port. I listened to the uh, president of the Residents Association and we're talking about concessioning. I think also concessioning is only a tip of the iceberg. Yes, concessioning already throws some level of responsibility on the concessionaire. But at the same time, we need to understand that it is not just where the trailers are parking that is causing gridlock. And it is not only just the matter of gridlock. It is also the impact on a nation's economy. Yes, Christmas um, celebration things are going to come, and a lot of them are probably not to, going to, be get, uh, uh, to get cleared until Easter next year. But that's just a little bit of it. That's uh, the point I'm trying to make. Now, Nigeria is an agricultural economy or tending towards an agribusiness economy as of the energy that has been thrown in by the current administration. 